bulk LED filaments from AliExpress, which have really crashed in price. The, these things used to be fairly expensive initially, but they're now down to roughly 10 pence each. That's either because they're just a, a common thing now, or perhaps it's because these are all rejects, and you just never know what you're getting from China. This is a Dubai lab. This is not a reject. This is part of the inspiration of getting some of these, because I quite fancy making a lamp with just tons of filaments in it. So the first thing to note is that this did actually come with a piece of cardboard to reinforce it. This is good because I got some other LED filaments from another supplier. They came loose in bags with other stuff like solenoid valves and pumps, things like that, and half of them were broken. That wasn't good. So the first thing I want to do is actually test these. I don't know what voltage these are. I've tried them at low voltage, but I get the feeling they're the traditional mains ones that probably have about 30 LEDs in series or so, so about 100 volts per filament. But I'm thinking I'll find that out with some discrete components. I shall doodle down what I'm going to do. And then I shall pause while I do it, just so this video isn't enormous. So what I'm thinking of doing, I'm thinking of getting the main supply. Yes, it will involve open connections. And putting a couple of resistors on the neutral and a couple of resistors on the live, he said, getting them in the wrong order, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, this is just for safety. The reason I'm using two resistors on each, it spreads dissipation and also um, it uh, acts, it increases the voltage rating with two resistors. Each one, a quarter watt resistor is only rated for about 150 volts. It's a safety thing. Then I'm going to uh, use a standard bridge rectifier. Let me draw a proper full bridge rectifier this time. Like the proper style. So those connections are going to go to that end. The diodes are all going point to point towards the positive, And they're going to point away from the negative. So all the diodes always point, all of them, in a bridge right far towards the positive connection. So that'll be negative. And then all I plan on doing is just dumping. Well, initially trying one to make sure I've got the polarity right, there is a little hole punched in the metal strip, and I think that indicates the positive, not sure, so I'm just going to dab this across to try it out, that way it'll only blow up one filament. If it works, I shall then attach the entire string of LEDs, and it's going to be very low current. Um, I'm going to choose 22K resistors um, for these, for all of them, and that, technically speaking, will give me roughly... Um, 240 volts, which are, is our local supply, divided by 88k, which is the total of all those resistors, would theoretically give about 2.7 milliamps. But uh, there's also going to be a significant voltage drop across these, so it's probably going to be about 1 milliamp, but it will let me at least test those uh, things. Uh, the dissipation, worst case dissipation, would be that current times 240. Uh, 0.6 watts across those resistors. There's four of them. Divide by four equals 0.16 watts each. They're rated uh, 0.25 watts the quarter watt. I shall pause while I solder this together, and I'll be back in one moment. Okay, here is my ugly creation. It's got the two resistors in each leg, 22K, uh, red, red, orange, and it's got the discrete bridge rectifier, and then it's got a couple of wires. Safe. Technically speaking, because I've got these uh, current limiting resistors, what would that be? There'd be a voltage drop across me. Just This is just a bit of me. Uh, 240 minus voltage drop across me. Let's say 40 volts. Worst case scenario, 200 divided by uh, 44. What sort of shock would I get if I came in contact that and was grounded? Uh, 4.5 milliamps. That's not bad. It would hurt. Definitely hurt up the fingers, but it wouldn't be life-threatening. And safety is important, said Clive, just basically bringing out a complete mess of electrical stuff onto his bench that is about to operate at 240 volts. Right, tell you what, in goes the two resistors. This is not live yet. This is a cliff quick test, by the way. It's a sort of lab and workshop type test device. So I want this wire over here, and I want this wire over here. I shall balance a filament between them. I shall just balance across. I think this is the correct polarity. Is this going to make connection? This is not normally how you test LED filaments. Actually, I say that. When you see some of the factories in China, it's pretty much how they test it. They've got bare connections, and they've got little ladies actually poking these things across. But here is the first test. It's, it's just fallen off, right? Tell you what, I'm not 
too scared. I shall put it across like that. It lit. Excellent. Keep my fingers clear of that. That would hurt. Yeah, that's that looks pretty good. What is the voltage across it? This is where I try. Actually, you know what? Before I do this, I'm just going to connect it across this whole strip. So I've ascertained that the little hole at the on the strip is the positive. So where's the little holes in these ones? That's uh, let's see if we can get right way around and not blow up an entire strip of these. So if I just stuff this wire through here, yeah, this is safe. Uh, and uh, then power this whole thing up. Oh, there you go. It is, uh, right, tell you what, to show you what this looks like, I'm going to take the exposure off, and I'm going to take the lights off. Ooh, nice. Slight shimmer, because there is no smoothing. But the good news is that these are all lighting evenly, right? Tell you what, let's bring the meter in and measure the voltage across that. It's not going to be super accurate, because... Oh, and I've just pinged an electrical connection off. Hold on, bear with me one moment. But I stuff that back through another hole. There, classy. It's it looks great in the camera. I mean, it looks really bright. It's not quite as bright here. So here is my meter. I'm going to set it for two hundred volts. I'm going to bring it in. I've got the display lit. Let's see roughly what sort of voltage is across these. Roughly forty three volts. That's less than I was expecting. 43 volts. Perplexing. Uh, 43 volts. Let me let me just work that out. Tell you what, I'm going to bring the lights back. Watch your eyes. The light is back. Uh, I shall lock the exposure so it doesn't yew you up and down. So 43 volts. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to be because it's going to be it's good. That's going to be quite rough DC, but it should be averaging it. But 43 volts. Uh, divided by at the low current these are operating at, like it's like less than a milliamp each, I would expect a forward voltage across each chip in these of about 2.4 volts equals 17.9. How accurate? I wonder if there's 18 LEDs in these. Can I count them? Uh, I may be able to count them. Uh, in Previous times I've tried to count them, I've actually taken a close-up picture of it glowing dimly and then uh, taken a look at the picture and uh, then worked it out. Tell you what, I'm going to try that, but I don't know. Let's maybe just... Uh, I don't know how easy it's going to be to do it right now in the middle of the video. I may have to print that picture off and look at it later. So I shall do that, but I shall also... Um, I'm going to experiment. Now I've done this and I know what sort of voltage they are, I'm going to make... Um, a rough light uh, with a capacitive dropper, I think. One moment, please. I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to do some experiments. Experiments have been done. I can resist it. Uh, Eighteen LEDs, spot on. That's less than I was expecting, but that is interesting. It does mean the voltage of these filaments. Well, let's work that out. Where the voltage is going to be at full current. Typically, it's going to be three volts at full current. So. Um, 18 times 3 volts equals, it's going to be about 54 volts per filament. That will allow, uh, in some of the American 120 volt fixtures, allow uh, two of these filaments to be used in series. Okay, I shall put this phone out the way. That's the little phone that I use just purely for pictures. Taking detailed pictures. Right, tell you what, I'm going to put, turn this off so I don't get zing off it. I'm going to bring the notepad back in again. Let's redesign this. So I'll start from scratch and I'm going to uh, come in with saliva neutral and I'm going to have a current limiting capacitor, say a resistor should I say, 1k probably, uh, a dropper capacitor with a discharge resistor across it of about 1 mega ohm. I'll make this round about 470 nano. This is just estimated. I shall then put that through, so that's very crudely drawn, a bridge rectifier, AC in, AC in, plus, minus, and then it's going to go through all these little LEDs like this, and then uh, through more. Technically speaking, I could put all three sets. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put all three sets in the series here and just make an absolutely ridiculous LED filament lamp. Like this, 
Uh, technically speaking, if I have source connections on solidly, I can also put a capacitor across here uh, and that will smooth it and make it a bit brighter too. Right, I'm going to do that right now. One moment, please. I would say this is looking pretty good. Things worthy of note. There's a sort of matte side to this, the metal, and the shiny side. The matte side is the side with the LEDs facing up, I think. Is it the same in them all? I think it is more or less the same in them all. I didn't notice before, but there are little red dots where they're missing filaments, and this is where they must have in the factory. They must have just uh, powered these up as big sections of strips and then gone along with a Sharpie and just put a dot where they're faulty and they've cut those out and then they've shipped them out. Um, so there's a one missing from there, one from there, one from there, and this one that I actually cut out from the end over here. The power supply I'm using for these is the 470 nanofarad capacitor with a 1 mega ohm discharge resistor, the 1K inrush limiting resistor, a discrete project for a Chong X capacitor with its own discharge resistor, and then they're just effectively all connected in uh, as like parallel runs, but connected in series uh, with these solder blobs. Let's give it a go. Let's see what the intensity is like and the power. So I'm just going to keep this wire out the way here. They're all lit. This is good. There is a slight variation in intensity, but I think that's just the LED tolerance. The Hoppy says uh, 3.7 watts. That's giving Philips a run for the money. Uh, 0.56 power factor. I'd pretty much expect that. 27 milliamps in the AC side. Uh, that looks all right. Um, if I turn the, if I take the exposure off and I turn the light off, is it just going to swamp out? Yes, it's swamped out, but that gives you an idea. Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. Not that there was really a lack of light in the first place. So, uh, yes, this is my version of the Dubai lamp then. It's the Clivey lamp uh, with its 104 filaments. I, should, I feel I should put this one in as well, make it 105. But to be honest, I'm going to experiment now. I'm going to create sort of frames. I'm going to maybe see if I can get some... Uh, globes and then just create a ridiculously over-the-top fake Dubai lamp with just loads and loads of filaments inside it all running at low power though so it's a, a visual that you can look at it without actually getting eye strain uh, but there we go I would say that's a success and these uh, filaments do seem to be decent quality-ish so that is it right back to the drawing board I think I'm going to have to experiment but at this point in time that's the end of this video and I shall experiment in cobbling some stuff up, something up with these because uh, it's quite a fun project to do.